Hello, it's Craig here with a quick video for a strong and easy to play build. Before that, I want to talk about one of the questions I got repeatedly after the new patch. What can we replace Flame of the Red Mains with for a crit build? This will require an entire video of its own, as there is no clear and easy winner. But I want to tone down some expectations, as there is nothing quite on par with the long and wide ranged heavy poise damage dealing Flame of the Red Mains weapon art, while still being consistently easy to land. This is after all the reason why it was nerfed. However, there are indeed still good weapon art options. I will cover this some other time. For today, I will introduce another strong Ash of War. Although it is not quite as geared towards poise breaking and dealing critical strikes specifically, and definitely harder to land than Flame of the Red Mains, it is still a great option to focus on for a build. Someone requested an easy to play PvE build that is still extremely effective. An example given was to use Royal Knight's Resolve with like Power Stance Colossal Weapons to do jump attacks. Very easy to play and quite effective most of the time too. As for my answer to this, it is to use the Ash of War Prayerful Strike. Those that know this weapon art probably already know how strong it is. And those that don't know this weapon art, I am here to introduce it in its full glory. I am honestly quite surprised this one isn't nerfed at all because it can trivialize many fights. The first thing you have to know about Prayerful Strike is although it is a sacred Ash of War, it is about as sacred as a heavy giant crusher, which is to say, not sacred at all. Not one bit. Zero. Nada. However, there is a whole lot of damage and even poise damage packed into this weapon art. On a hit per hit basis, this pretty much beats out most of the possible moves you can ever do, with even a colossal weapon. Furthermore, if you do land a hit, it heals for 30% of your maximum HP. In a game where HP regeneration is difficult to come by, especially if you're not focused on faith, this is a lot. It is not difficult to land this skill if the enemy doesn't use an attack that definitely staggers you in PvE, since it grants 350 hyper armor, starting from the 5th frame of your animation, which is really quick. But because it has quite a long windup, it can be difficult to land on more agile enemies. This is when you want to default back to your other attacks, like jump attacks. As for the armor, anything works. But remember, the tankier you are, the more your effective HP is. So, if you really want to maximize the build, definitely go for a tanky setup, so that you can just tank your way through things. You also want at least 51 poise for general PvE stuff. Finally, the talisman choice. The display talismans are mostly geared towards an earlier game build to make your prayerful strike even stronger. Especially if you have your flasks maxed out, you can swap off Carrion Filigree Crest. With even higher levels for enough endurance, you can also swap off the Great Jar's Arsenal. My suggestions would be talismans like the Ritual Shield Talisman, which will help you take 30% less damage, which in turn helps you make it easier for you to heal back up with Prayerful Strike to meet the condition of 100% HP again. Or Claw Talisman to help you do more damage against those targets where Prayerful Strike is difficult to land. Crimson Amber Medallion also works too, because higher max HP also means more HP per heal, since Prayerful heals 30% of your max HP. As for why this build is easy to play, I would think it is pretty self-explanatory. But just in case you didn't figure it out, let's go over the plan for each type of unit. Against small mobs, Prayerful Strike. Against elite mobs, Prayerful Strike. Against many mobs, Prayerful Strike. Against bosses, Prayerful Strike. Healing required, Prayerful Strike. Maximum damage, Prayerful Strike. Agile mobs. Uh, well, you. Yeah, you do jump attacks. Overall strategy. You should have gotten the gist of things, but once again, just in case you didn't, prayerful strike as much as possible and jump attacks when you can't. IQ needed to play this build as many letters as there are in prayerful strike, so 16. Wait, did you really just believe me? This is why you don't blindly trust people, not even the Elden Ring wiki. If you've ever doubted something, definitely get a confirmation. Prayerful strike has 15 letters, not 16. 
which makes it the perfect amount of IQ needed for you to play this build. The only thing you have to remember to do with this build is to rebuff your weapon when it stops fizzling with electricity, which, believe me, will be about as routine as wiping your ass after taking a number 2 once you start playing this build. One final note is that when bosses are down, they do take 20% more damage from a following hit, so you can often do prayerful strike instead of a critical hit, as it also helps you regenerate your health while still doing a hefty load of damage. Not much else for me to say, I won't waste your time introducing such a basic build, so I gave you the things you needed as concisely as possible. Just go try the build out if you're ever struggling with Elden Ring and want an easy to play build. Like and subscribe, and if you want a customized build, or if you want to support my channel, please buy my book in the description down below. Krite, signing out.